Welcome back to the complete online dressage course by howtodressage.com. In this presentation, we're going to be focusing on impulsion, which is scale four within the dressage scales of training. So in this presentation, we're going to look at what exactly is impulsion. How do you know when you have enough impulsion? What are the prerequisites for impulsion? How to ask for it? And we're also gonna look at some exercises to help you develop it. So as a recap, here is your dressage skills of training pyramid. Now, impulsion is fourth on the training scale and it only becomes relevant and useful once the first three scales of rhythm, suppleness and contact are fairly secure. Now, if you ask for too much impulsion before these scales are established, it can cause problems because the horse will not yet have the physical ability to manage a lot of impulsion without stiffening or coming against the hand. So yes, the horse should be forward thinking and reactive to your driving aids, but be aware of pushing him for too much impulsion too early on. So what exactly is impulsion? So here is the FEI definition. And the FEI is the International Governing Body for Equestrian Sport. So they say that impulsion is the transmission of controlled propulsive energy generated from the hindquarters into the athletic movement of the eager horse. And its ultimate expression can be shown only through the horse's soft and swinging back and is guided by the gentle contact with the rider's hand. Now, there's a couple of things to note with this definition. Firstly, is that it is controlled. If you remember back to our presentation on relaxation, which was what we called scale zero in the scales of training, there was such a thing as positive tension. And positive tension is a type of tension that is controllable and it is constant. Whereas negative tension was uncontrollable and inconsistent. So when we look at creating impulsion, we're looking at a type of energy that is controllable. Now, the second thing to note with this definition is that you can clearly see how suppleness, which is scale number two, and contact, which is scale number three, are essential for the control and direction of impulsion into a useful tool. And we're especially looking at this soft and swinging back, which is longitudinal suppleness. So let's take a look at it in practice. So first, energy is created by the activity and engagement of the hind legs. It then passes through the back, flows over the top line, which creates swing and suspension in the paces. It then comes down to the contact and back through the reins, where it can be modified into something useful, such as a half halt, which is done through the rider's seat and rein aids. Now, when the rider uses this half halt, it makes the horse's hind legs come more underneath him, making him take more weight behind and making the balance more uphill. So from this explanation, you can see that balance and impulsion are connected. The more the hind legs step under and the more weight that is taken on the hind quarters, the more balanced the horse will be. But also these active hind legs create more energy flowing over the horse's back. So that energy circle that we talked about in the previous presentation of contact can keep flowing. So now let's take a look at what happens if you don't have enough impulsion. So the horse will have a lack of athleticism. The paces will be flat and unelastic. There will be obvious aids needed just to keep the horse going. It's very exhausting for the rider. The horse will also be slow to respond to the aids and you will have difficulty producing medium and extended paces. Usually what will happen is the rider will ask for the extension, but because the horse doesn't have the impulsion and the hind legs placed under the body, the horse will tend to just speed up instead and just go into a pace with a quicker tempo. You will also struggle with lateral work and collection for the same reason, because them hind legs aren't coming underneath the horse's body. 
Now, in contrast to that, let's take a look at what happens if you have too much impulsion. And yes, you can have too much of it. Although you may find your instructor always shouting that you need more impulsion, it is possible to have too much. So if you do ask for too much of it, it can result in tension, in tightness, in hurrying. You could have difficulty with the controls. The horse could come into a short, tight neck with a tight outline. You could develop contact issues. Now, a thing to note about these problems is that they can also occur if you ask for the impulsion too soon. So if you haven't got those first three scales established and you try to create more impulsion, you are also likely to get these problems. So let's look at what happens when you have the correct amount of impulsion. So when you have that balance just right, well, you will get power, the ability to produce that range of variations within the paces. So you will be easily able to extend the horse's strides and collect them. You will also get thrust, a spring off the ground in trot and canter, which will lead to a more pronounced rhythm to the paces because of that increased suspension will help you produce more cadence. And you will have the ability to maintain the rhythm and suspension in all work, especially in the lateral movements. Now, if you remember back to the presentation we did on rhythm, we did say that you are forever going to be working on rhythm and it will continue to be refined the further up the training scale and the more you progress with your horse's training. And this is an example of how it starts to become more prominent. Yes, we are working on impulsion, but it's also improving the horse's rhythm and also starting to produce the first signs of cadence. Now also, when you have the correct amount of impulsion, the horse will be willing and eager to obey your aids and it will give the impression of controlled power. And this is what makes the horse exciting to watch and makes it exhilarating to ride. Now frequently, when we talk about impulsion, Many riders make the mistake of simply thinking that it's making their horse go faster, but it's not. It's essential that you understand the difference between impulsion and speed. So impulsion refers to energy, or as I like to call it, oomph. It's not speed, it's oomph. So when the judge says that more impulsion is required, it means a more energetic hind leg is required, not a quicker tempo. Now an active hind leg will flex at the joints and will propel the horse forward through his back to the rider's hand. And then when the rider uses a half halt, the horse's hind legs will come more underneath him, taking more weight and making that balance more uphill. Now in a nutshell, impulsion helps to develop the horse's engagement and ultimately collection. But if the rider asks for the activity without using the half halt, the seat and the rein aids to capture the energy, then the horse will simply go faster, which will create more speed. And this will lose him balance, often making him fall onto his forehand as he does so. So if you try to ask for impulsion and you get speed, then you know you've not quite done it right. Impulsion should equal oomph. You should have more oomph to the paces without the horse speeding up or going any faster. Now, if when you do ask for impulsion, your horse does speed up, then you might be missing a key ingredient. Now, I want you to try and think about what this might be. What do you think the key to impulsion is? We have talked about it in this presentation and we've also covered it in depth in a previous presentation. So, the key to impulsion is suppleness because the transmission of energy can only happen if the horse is flexible in his hind leg joints, his muscles and his tendons. And he must have the ability to step under to shift his weight and balance in order to make use of the energy that you have created. So we're specifically here talking about longitudinal suppleness, which is suppleness over the back and suppleness of the joints. Now, if the horse is not supple, then yes, you can try to ask for more impulsion, but instead, the speed is likely to increase. The horse will just work at a quicker tempo. So we need those supple joints. The horse needs to be active in the hind leg, 
and we need that longitudinal suppleness so that the horse can propel the energy forward through his back to the rider's hands. Now if we look at suppleness in the scales of training, we'll see that it's second on the scale. And if you remember back to the presentation we did on the introduction of the scales, you'll remember that it's interlocked with rhythm and contact. And these three scales build the foundation phase for your horse. Now, when you are riding to improve the way of going, especially with a very young horse, it's not possible to ride only to achieve one of these three scales. Now, an experienced and correct rider will be constantly checking all three of these simultaneously because they'll know that these three scales are needed in the foundation in order to achieve these higher three scales of impulsion, straightness and collection. Now, these three together create a byproduct of elasticity. And when the horse has plenty of elasticity, he will generate more energy, but with bigger, rounder, higher strides, which will therefore help you create more impulsion and elevation. Now, this can only happen if the horse is working through the back to the contact. And suppleness, especially that longitudinal suppleness and the hind leg suppleness, is a key factor. Now, if you are in a dressage test and you are trying to ask for more impulsion, but you aren't really getting it, the judge tends to write on the sheet the word tight, or more often the horse appears to be working in a tight frame. Now, it's this tightness that prevents the rider from riding the horse more forwards and creating more impulsion because the locked and tight frame simply prevents it from happening. Now, over time, this tightness can form a poor attitude from the horse, because as your aids and the intensity of them increase, trying to drive the horse forwards, and him being unable to do it because of his tight and locked frame, then the degree of cooperation from the horse will decrease, and then the cycle revolves. Eventually, the horse may not want to go forward at all, and this is how resistance builds up. Now, conversely, when the horse is supple and elastic to ride, the rider will feel as though they don't have to use the driving aids at all. The horse will always be at the end of the reins, always working into the contact, and the rider will just need to use subtle nudging aids through their core and their seat to keep the horse in front of them. Now the tempo can also be quickly modified, even on experienced horses, and it can be done through the seat and the rein aids. Now horses do not have to fit a specific stereotype to go like this. It's only the result of correct training and being able to create that all important flow of energy through the back, which completes this energy circle. We talked about it in contact, and we talked about it just earlier on as well in this presentation. Now, many riders accidentally block this precious activity that they're trying so hard to create because they block the energy circle by not allowing the horse to use his back properly. This is commonly seen when riders try to go sitting trot, especially if they've not quite mastered the sitting trot yet or if the horse is not ready to have a rider sitting on his back in the sitting trot. The horse has to be able to raise his back and work in a functional posture first before he can take the weight of the rider in the sitting trot. Now that can cause the horse to tighten through his back, possibly even come hollow, and therefore block that flow of energy. It can also happen if the rider sits with thighs that are too tight and that grip the horse. Again, that can block the activity and the flow of energy over the back. So where possible, be careful not to block that flow of energy. Don't grip with your thighs or your knees. Allow the horse to use his back fully. So now we've talked over some of the things that can go a little bit wrong when we ask for impulsion. Let's actually talk about how do we go about creating it. So we're now going to look at some prerequisites for impulsion. Now, technically, all of these come back to relaxation, rhythm, suppleness and contact in one way or another. But this is a list of helpful identifiers which will help you assess if your horse is ready to be asked for more impulsion or not. So if he is ready, he should have a fair degree of balance and he should be free from tension and anxiety. 
It should have understanding of the driving aids and controlling aids, so basically a basis of the half halt and be able to be ridden in between the leg and the hand. There should be lack of resistance anywhere in the horse's body or mind and he should be forward thinking. Now forward thinking does not mean speed, it is the attitude of mind, so it doesn't mean that the horse is running off with you at every opportunity he gets. The horse should also have elastic movement of the limbs, an active hind leg, which is a quick hind leg as well, so it does not trail out behind the body, but it picks up ready to move forward again and to step underneath the horse's centre of gravity. The horse should also show an ability to track up and over track. Now, tracking up is where the hind leg steps into the footprints left by the front feet and over tracking is where the hind leg steps over the footprints left by the front feet. So, assuming that your horse has all of that in place, here is how to ask for impulsion. So, you're going to first start by asking your horse for more activity with the hind legs. And for this, you need to use a simple leg aid. Now, once you get a reaction from the horse, you need to stop the aid and sit still. Resist the urge to constantly keep squeezing him with your legs or kicking him repeatedly because that will quickly make him go dead to the aids. Now, as you use the activating leg aid, you must also use a half halt or a waiting rein aid so that the horse doesn't speed up. But now as soon as you've used that leg aid and you've done your half halt, you need to ease the rein and allow the energy to go forward through the horse's back from behind. And you need to allow them hind legs to step further underneath the horse. Now in the beginning, you need to only ask for small amounts to begin with and be aware of tension. If you start asking for more impulsion and the horse gets tense, then you've possibly asked for too much. Dial it back a little bit, re-establish the relaxation, and then begin again. Now, if you're not quite sure about how to ride a half halt, then do look out for a future presentation in this course where we're gonna look at the half halt specifically. But for impulsion, the half halt is necessary because if you don't half halt with your seat and rein aids, then the energy that you create with the horse's hind legs will just swing right out the front door. The horse may speed up, the horse may even go into another pace. The half halt is essential because it's what recycles the energy back into the hind legs. It's what creates that energy for them to step further underneath, to lift the forehand, to create a better balance, to create that cadence in the strides with the enhanced moment of suspension. Without the half halt, you'll probably just end up pushing your horse more into the forehand and making the strides go quicker and flatter. So finally, let's take a look at two exercises to help you develop impulsion. So firstly, we have transitions. Now you may notice that every time we do these exercises to help you improve whatever, transitions more than likely always comes up. And that is because transitions is the foundation of your dressage training. They're a fantastic training tool and most of us do not ride enough of them. Now in this instance, transitions are helpful because they improve the flexibility and engagement of the hind legs. Now probably the most beneficial exercise for impulsion is going to be transitions within the paces. So for example, going from working trot to medium trot back to working trot, or working canter, medium canter, back to working canter. As you push your horse forwards into the medium paces, it will improve that engagement and activity from the hind legs. And then as you bring him back into the more working pace, it should hopefully help to recycle that energy to keep that leg hind leg stepping under, therefore improving the balance and the impulsion. Now, if you're not quite sure how to ride these transitions, We have got future presentations on them within this course. You'll be able to find them at course.howtodressage.com. But the second exercise to help develop impulsion is lateral work. Now, lateral work, again, improves the flexibility and engagement of the hind legs. But lateral work is also very good for eager horses or those that tend to rush. So if you have a horse where you put the leg on, you try to create that impulsion, you do it with the half halt, but the horse is more likely to rush or possibly even get tense, 
then lateral work is good because it will help you control that eagerness and that tendency to rush. Because as the horse is bent around your inside leg, or as he is traveling sideways, it's a lot more difficult for him to run forwards. Therefore, it will help to keep him more balanced and help to recycle that energy into his hind legs rather than allowing it to escape out the front door. Now, again, with the lateral work, there's presentations coming up in this course showing you how to ride each of them correctly and in what order to introduce them. But going back to impulsion, if you want more set exercises, then there is a downloadable exercise sheet which accompanies this presentation. You can print that out and ride them at home. It's available at course.howtodressage.com. Just find this presentation and you should be able to download it at the bottom. But to quickly summarise this presentation, impulsion is fourth in the dressage scales of training. It's the transmission of controlled propulsive energy generated from the hind quarters. But rhythm, contact and suppleness must first be in place. And remember that speed does not equal impulsion. Balance and flexibility of the hind legs are needed and only ask for a small amount of impulsion to begin with and be aware of tension. Essentially, impulsion is the ingredient that makes dressage exciting and easy to ride, but just be careful of focusing on it too early on in the horse's training. Provided that your horse is forward thinking and he is reactive to your driving aids, then just be patient and wait for them first three scales to be secure before you add too much drive. But always remember that impulsion does not equal speed. But if you get them earlier stages right, then impulsion will be very easy to add and then your training will really start to take off. Now, this presentation was brought to you by How To Dressage. If you would like to continue with this course, please visit course.howtodressage.com. Thank you very much for watching.